dear learners, welcome to the National Institute of Open Schooling. Today I am going to talk about Kingdom Monora, but before I start with this, let us recall about these kingdoms. You have already learned in the previous lessons that it was Whittaker in 1969 who classified the various organisms into five kingdoms. Kingdom Monera, Kingdom Protectista or Protista, Kingdom Fungi, Kingdom Plantae, and Kingdom Animalia. And he did this because there are diversified organisms which are found on this beautiful planet Earth. So to, in order to differentiate each one of them, he grouped them into certain groups depending upon their similarities and differences. The monorans were the first organisms that came on this earth. These are prokaryotic unicellular organisms, whereas all others are eukaryotic. Protoctistin or protista, they are unicellular, but they are eukaryotic, that is, the cell organelles are defined and are enclosed by a membrane. Plantae, animalia and fungi on the other hand are all multicellular organisms. They are eukaryotes. Initially the fungi was placed along with the plantae but because they are not differentiated into the three distinct regions root, stem and the plant body, that is there is no differentiation of the plant body, therefore they were grouped separately into kingdom fungi. The plantae as you all know can manufacture their own food. Animals are heterotroph, so Whittaker grouped these into five kingdoms. Later it was also found that since these prokaryotic bacterians were the first one to exist on this earth, they were known as archaebacteria and they included two groups. One was archaebacteria and the other was eubacteria. Now the archaebacteria are the true bacteria. Archaebacteria are the primitive ones that can survive under extreme conditions of the environment. Now archaebacteria these include all the bacteria they, that occur under harsh conditions. For example, methogenic bacteria, they live in the sewage. In fact, these are the ones which are used for the sewage treatment. They are also found in the intestinal tract of cows. Thermoacidophilic bacteria live in hot springs. On the contrary, halophilic bacteria, they live in the salty lakes and rivers. Let us see the various eubacteria. As you can see here, they are of different colors, shapes, etc. So these eubacteria, they include all the microscopic organisms. They are prokaryotes. Prokaryotes that the cell organelles in them like mitochondria, Golgi apparatus, endoplasmic reticulum, etc. are absent in them and they do not have a well defined nucleus. They include the bacteria and blue green algae. The blue green algae are now known as cyanobacteria. They are all unicellular organisms that they are single cell organisms. So the moment we say prokaryotic unicellular organism Immediately it should come to your mind that we are talking about the bacteria, the cyanobacteria, that is we are talking about the kingdom Monera. We are talking about the eubacteria. Let us now study about the various parts of this unicellular organism. They consist of an outer wall as you can see in the diagram and this is known as the cell wall. The cell wall in them is made up of peptidoglycan. 
Now, this peptidoglycan is unique to the bacteria only and is not found in the plants, which also have a cell wall, but it is not made up of peptidoglycan. Below the cell wall lies the cell membrane or the plasma membrane. The cell wall protects the cell and also gives its shape. In some bacteria, as you can see in the diagram, it is surrounded by yet another layer which is known as the capsule, but that is only in some of the bacteria. From the cell wall, certain thread-like structures that you see in the diagram, they are emerging out. These are known as pili and these play an important role in joining the two bacteria during reproduction. The cell membrane encloses the cytoplasm and the other structures which are present. Well-defined nucleus with a nuclear membrane is absent in them. Therefore, this DNA lies in the cytoplasm and is not enclosed by any membrane. Now, the region where this is present is known as the nucleoid. This plasmid also reproduces along with the DNA, the other DNA, but it contains genes for antibiotic resistance and other sex factors and therefore is beneficial for the bacteria where it is present. You can see here in the diagram that a long thread-like structure is present which is much thicker than the pili that I have just told you. This is known as flagella. These flagella make the bacteria move about freely. The cell organelles are absent in these prokaryotic organisms except that they contain ribosomes which are required for protein synthesis. Dear learners, now you can do a little activity which will make you confident and will make you realize that you have understood the concept of a prokaryotic organism. You can take a thermocol or you can take a cardboard and with the help of plasticine, you can make a bacterial cell. You can use the various threads of different colors and thickness to show the pili and the flagella. So if the mitochondria is absent in them, then how does the cellular respiration takes place in these prokaryotic organisms? Now this cellular respiration takes place in certain organelles which are known as mesosomes. You can see these mesosomes here in the figure as internal extensions of the plasma membrane. So the cellular respiration takes place in these mesosomes in the absence of the mitochondria. The respiration otherwise is both anaerobic as well as aerobic. Reproduction too in these monorins are both by asexual method as well as sexual method. As you can see in the figure, the asexual method of reproduction takes place by binary fission. The DNA, as you can see here, replicates first. And as the DNA is replicating, the bacteria cell starts growing and enlarges in size. And once the DNA replication is complete, the two DNA moves to the two op opposite poles of the bacterial cell. A constriction, as you can see in the diagram, appears in the middle and deepens. And finally, it results in the formation of two bacterial cells which separate from each other. Each one is a daughter bacterial cell which has its own DNA and it's capable of independent existence. Sexual reproduction also takes place in bacteria. As you can see here, there are two bacteria. One of them is known as F plus bacteria and the other one is known as F minus bacteria. The F plus bacteria contains a F factor which is responsible for the sexual reproduction. And this is the one which will give the DNA to the other bacteria, which is the F minus bacteria. The donor bacteria carries a DNA sequence called the fertility factor or the F factor. Typically, 
The genetic material is in the form of a plasmid or a smaller piece of DNA. The F factor in the cell allows this bacteria to produce a pili. As you can see in this figure, the pili which is given out from the bacteria that contains the F factor would form a protoplasmic bridge between the two bacteria. Plasmid is nicked and a single strand of DNA is transferred to the recipient bacteria, the bacteria that did not contain the F factor. Both cells then synthesize a complementary strand to produce a double stranded circular plasmid. Both the bacterial cells are viable donors now. The genetic material transferred during conjugation provides some genetic advantage to the recipient antibiotic resistant genes, sex factors, etc. and therefore is more advantageous than the one which is devoid of it. You can list out the differences between the asexual and sexual mode of reproduction on a chart paper or you could also make the various steps of the asexual and sexual mode of reproduction with the help of plasticin as you have done earlier on. Do you know how curd is said? Well, you would say that a small amount of curd is added to the milk, warm milk that is, and then left aside for a couple of hours depending upon the temperature and the curd is said. But what is the scientific basis of it? It's basically the lactobacillus which is present which at a particular temperature converts the milk into curd. So you see the advantage of this bacteria. At some point or the other, we all have taken antibiotics as prescribed by the doctor because when we are not well, the doctor prescribes an antibiotic depending upon the disease. And do you know that many of these antibiotics are obtained from these bacteria? You are all aware of penicillin which was the first one to be discovered which was obtained from a bacteria Penicillium notatum. We should not forget that many of them are harmful also and can cause various diseases that are typhoid, you know that it is caused by typhi bacteria, cholera by vibro cholerae, tetanus, diphtheria, tuberculosis, these are all caused by the various bacteria. You can do yet another activity and for this you can take help of your mother. You can make a chart of the various diseases caused by bacteria, remember only by bacteria. The causative agent of this disease, the preventive measures and the control. Now this will help you out to keep these bacteria away so that you are free from all the diseases. I hope by now you must have understood the basic concepts of Kingdom Monera in details about the various systems you will be doing later on.